Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack a Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three stakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, friends. Welcome to Mavs Moneyball After Dark. This is Kirk Henderson, and I'm joined by fellow editor at Mavs Moneyball, Doyle Raider. Hi, Doyle. How are you? I'm good, Kirk. How are you? I'm good. So it's Thursday night. It's the final game before All-Star break, and the Dallas Mavericks held on against the New Orleans Pelicans 125-118. to It was a very bizarre game. The Mavericks at one point led by as many as 24 points. Um, I want to say that was early in the fourth quarter just dominating uh and they had sort of toyed with with the the pelicans on and off throughout the game um luka Doncic, just as a a subheader to this game finished with 49 points 15 rebounds and eight assists and also somehow only managed to score two points and was really going for the 50 piece he missed the final two free throws of the game he missed all sorts of shots his colleagues missed all sorts of shots themselves the mavericks once again showed themselves to be just one of the worst crunch time offenses in basketball but it didn't matter and they won so what so what did you think about this game because this was like this just felt like the the ultimate pre-all-star game uh where one team was ready to just go and then they let their guard down. They're getting dominated. And then the other team that was doing the winning decided that it was time to go to all-star break. And then that, I mean, CJ McCollum at one point, I think had hit eight straight baskets to bring them back into this. Like it was, it was a strange game. Yeah. The, uh, the fourth quarter was some very throwback classic Marvs right there. That was, uh, I, I don't know when Lucas sat, um, down with when he had like you know 45 or 47 points mm-hmm. I, I i could just feel it i was like he's gonna have to check back in because he's the only one carrying the offense at all and lo and behold he, he has to come back in and score you know four more points or whatever he did and it, it, it just ground to a halt like every good thing that the team had been doing just like fell apart and allowed the pelicans to go on what was potentially you know obviously they didn't win but potentially a game, a run that could have you know netted them the game in the end i mean it, it, was, it was, just... was a disastrous lineup in the fourth quarter yeah so luca left the game with 10 minutes like 9 59 davis Bertans enters the game for him they were up 110 to 86 luca didn't come back into the game until 635 so he roughly sat three and a half minutes the pelicans at that point had chewed nine points off the lead they were still up by 15 and the mavericks just went into oh shit oh shit oh shit mode and you know luca was taking shitty jumpers or not it was like weird right-handed driving layups off the glass that's really what they were and then no one was getting back on defense and McCollum just kept taking it and kept taking it and then all of a sudden the Mavericks had to take a timeout with 423 left and they're only up by seven I mean this lead got within four points before the Mavericks finally closed the door it's one of those where I think it's fair to chalk it up to let's just get to all-star but I don't know. It's just it's I, I'm looking forward to seeing what like Mavs fans have to say on the on the green room because it was it, it didn't inspire a lot of confidence despite Luca pouring in a bajillion points. And that's kind of been the thing though. It's like it's been Luca and he's been like forty percent of all of the offensive production, it feels like for the past, <laughs> you know, week plus. I mean you know, Brunson had a good game tonight. He was extremely efficient. Brunson yeah. was huge, but Brunson and, was also on the floor when the league went to hell. 
Like the, right. the like Luca finished with a plus twenty one. So when Luca was in the game, the Mavericks kicked the crap, and then Dorian Finney Smith did too. But he and Luca tend to share the floor together fairly extensively. Everybody yeah. else was a negative except for Kleber. Yeah, I guess that's not true. It's a, I, I still don't really understand how this game happened. I mean, you said it. You sent me a text during the game where you said Dwight Powell is the worst defense or worst defensive rebounding center in the mm-hmm. NBA, and like I think you're sassing me, but I think you're not wrong. I don't think I'm wrong at all with that. Like it's he he's like the most almost in the best position player when it comes to rebounding because he's in the right area but he's not in the right place and that's constantly like he had what five rebounds tonight that's what you're getting from your starting center five rebounds and I think the rebounding now that Porzingis is gone is gonna be a a major issue Uh, granted you know Porzingis was hurt a lot so he wasn't playing a whole ton but the Pelicans, you know, clean them up, clean them out on the glass. The Mavericks continue to lose the battle on the glass. Like it's just going to be a thing. And cause Dwight mm-hmm. Powell is, you know, he'll have a, a rare game where uh, he'll get like 10 rebounds. And then Mavs state media will uh, be beating the drum of he's actually a good uh, rebounder. But, I mean, it's not really his fault. Like, no, it's not. It's he's not. I so think he's much, fine. Like so Jonas Valanciunas is just so much bigger than him. And there's just these matchups where it's like Embiid, Valanciunas, Jokic. Like the, I don't want to ever say the traditional big in the NBA is back because that I don't think that's true. But some of the best players in the league for the first time, you know, the last uh, Embiid, Jokic, are, are like some of the best players in the league are big right now. And that the Mavericks don't have a starting level big. And, you know, Porzingis, say what you will. He's a good basketball player, and I would consider him a starting level five. This is the sort of thing that's going to eat them, which is just wild since they had six centers on the roster at one point. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy to think about. Like, it's when I watch these games, like, I constantly just kind of think about what happens in the playoffs when they, you know, teams, like, literally, they started Jackson Hayes tonight because they wanted to go big against the Mavericks, you know? Yep. And Jackson Hayes, you know, kind of destroyed the zone early on, and so they kind of went away from that. But, but like, this is going to be an issue. Like, this yeah. big men are uh, – opposing big men are going to be an issue. And I think that our our friend uh, Ryan Morton, who uh, loves his Cavaliers, would disagree with you that the big man is uh, not back. He, the Cavs have, like, a million big men. Well, and and it's interesting because, you know, I don't want to jump ahead. I still want to talk about this game. But the Mavericks come out of all-star play break playing the Utah Jazz. Right. And Rudy Gobert is just – that's who they might play in the playoffs right now. And that's going to be a really interesting game to watch with everyone having had rest and, and, you know, the teams hopefully being as healthy as they can be. And and it's just – it's been something the past several games – and they, they need to find a way to team rebound out of it. Most of the year, the team has actually done pretty well on rebounding. And that's, you know, whether Porzingis was playing or not. Right. And so it's just, it's a little, it's a little odd to see them struggling quite like this. But, you know, some, sometimes rebounding really doesn't matter. <laughs> Particularly if you're, if you're controlling like defense and getting up good, you know, the Mavericks played pretty good defense for, I would say probably 35 minutes of this 48 minute game. It's just in those stretches where they didn't play well. They played awful. Yeah. And like there was a play early on, I think it was either late first quarter or early second quarter. Luca was just like absolutely battling defensively against Brandon Ingram. And like, I was, you know, it's awesome to see him do that. Like he, he shut Ingram down on that possession. Like Ingram put up like a, a ball that bricked off the front of the iron, I think. But, uh, you know, that's something you don't always see and like, or you haven't seen from him. And uh, Jason Kidd, I was on uh, the post game press conference before we hopped on this call. And he was saying that, you know, he thinks that Luke has always been able to play defense. He, it's just sometimes you need to ask players to do something before they actually like commit to it and do it. So I thought For that sure. was a pretty. I thought that was a pretty interesting quote from him, but you know, it's, it's clear. Luca is invested. Is he the best defender on the team? No, not by a long shot, but he's invested in it. He like tries and like, that's, that's significant. Yeah. I mean, in, in this is where, you know, Tim McMahon talked about this today on, um, 
the Hoop Collective pod where he said Luke has been a lot more self-deprecating about his kind of fitness level. And lots and lots of people have been messaging me lately, you know, kind of finally sort of admitting that Luca just wasn't in good shape for the first 20 games. And the defense aspect of this is really interesting because defense soaks up a lot of energy. It just does over the course of a game. And for Luca to be the player that he probably wants to be, this fitness journey is not, he's going to have to continue it past this season into next season and come into season really in good shape if he wants to play defense and be like an MVP caliber player. I, I suspect that this season's been a little bit of an eye-opening one for him. And as they go along, maybe it will be, you know, if if they, let's just say, heaven forbid, they don't make it out of the first round of the playoffs, he's going to both have to say, all right, yes, we need better support, but also I'm going to have to commit to being better earlier and longer. But it's it's not necessarily fair. Um, so we'll we'll see what's going on with that, though. I'm... I don't know. This is this this feels like a game where I would really overreact to it, but I I am kind of looking forward to All Star Break. Um, this the fact that they closed out, you know, following the the Porzingis trade with a win against the the the, the Pelicans, win against the Heat, which was huge. Um, yeah, they lost to the Clippers, but they basically won looking at it here they won six of their last seven games heading into all-star break they've got to feel pretty good about that right i mean yeah like i think this team is in better shape than certainly i would have uh, expected coming into the season so i mean that's a positive and they're they're playing great right now honestly like the the win against the heat was definitely a statement win like on the road like the heat are a good team like really good and the Mavericks went into that game pretty banged up and, you know, won pretty handily. So, and then this game, you know, they, they should have won this game. The Pelicans are, I think they mentioned it on the broadcast, like after starting the season horribly, they're like 20 and 20 in their last 40 games. So they're, 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 they're not as bad as their record necessarily suggests, but it's certainly a team that you need to beat. And uh, they did. So, I mean, I think they have to be happy with themselves going in. Like they, there's some games in there, like the Clippers game that they lost. I was at that game. They played very lackadaisical throughout. It was not a good, it was not a good showing. But other than that, it does seem like this team, when they do have games like that, respond. Like they bounce yeah. back, and uh, that's something you haven't always seen. But uh, you know, from the Mavericks in the past. But I guess that's uh, kind of their identity now. If if we can uh, if we can say that. Well, I really don't think there's too much more to hyperventilate about them during this game. It's probably best. Like I was, I had the game on, I had house guests over and um, uh, one of them was like very fascinated by the fact that I do this. And it's just like, well, at the end of the day, I tend to do this because I'm either going to talk to my friends about this online or I'm going to talk to my wife about it. So it's good that we have these outlets to talk to each other because most people are most normals don't give a shit about the Mavericks beating the Pelicans in a random game in February. But um, so coming up after just like kind of looking ahead a little bit, you know, your work schedule is a little bit different. Are you going to be, are you going to be able to make it to a few more games kind of down the stretch here? What do you think? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to go to the ones on the weekends when I can, Mm. but uh, weeknights probably, probably not so much anymore. Just it's, I, I don't work. No, it's a grind. When you have a yeah. normal job, it's a absolute grind. And yeah, it's 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 hard. Yeah, and, it, it's, and, it's, it's, and it's out of the way now. Like I don't work like you know close to the arena anymore. So right. getting there is not a not the easiest thing. No, because it's 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 you know we watch these games at home and it's a two hour and twenty minute commitment. When you go to the game, even as a fan, when you go to the game, you're committing four and a half to five hours of your day yeah. to kind of it's, be there. It's it's a slog, <laughs> definitely. Like mm-hmm. since, since they've moved all the press conference stuff to Zoom, like I don't go to the games as early as I used to to you know get because you I don't have you know press conference or locker room access. There's there's tiers of access nowadays because of uh, COVID regulations within the NBA. Like there's only a handful of you know, reporters that do have, you know, at least press conference access at games. Uh, no one has locker room access to my knowledge. Nope. It's uh, it's, it's all very 
it's all very new kind of environment, even though it's been like this for a couple of years now, but it's not how it was like ever. So it's yeah. definitely like it's it's changed the reporting experience, at least on my end. And uh it's still getting adjusting to that, but uh honestly I don't mind the Zoom stuff because it's you know, I I, I can sit on, you know, the couch or something and listen in and like ask questions if I need to. Yeah. Yeah, and that's nice. Mm-hmm. All right. So thank you for hanging out with me, Doyle. Um, for anybody yeah. who didn't know, it was Josh's birthday, and he was going to like do stuff, and I yelled at him and said, absolutely not. Um, he should not have to watch the Mavericks on his birthday. Though the fun part, and, and you know, I was trying to explain this to my mother, like this season can feel like a grind at any point, but then you're watching a game that Luca drops 49 points with just – he dropped 49 points in about 35 minutes. I think he might have had 45 points in 32 minutes. And though he finished the game with, he ended up playing 38. I mean, he just, the things he does when he gets on these scoring fits is just, it's wild. It's worth, like, it's always worth kind of keeping an eye on a Mavs game now, which I like that part of covering this team because we've just done it in the past pre Luca kind of tail into Dirk's, you know, post prime where you get to this part in the season and it's just hard to watch. Cause there's not like nothing super exciting was going to happen, but with Luca, he's drawn at a fan on the sideline and it was, it was just fun. It was a fun game. I'd like, I'd like to hear uh Dalton's firsthand account of uh, Luca jawing at fans down, down there in smoothie King. I mean, I made the joke that, that, that <laughs> the, the fan like Luca was yelling at Dalton which that, that, well, you know that, I, <laughs> that would be incredible if that ever happened. I would I would pay good money to see that. I mean, I I, I couldn't figure it out, but but our guy Panda Hank, uh, Panda Hank forty one on YouTube, go follow him. Uh, essentially noted that there was a fan calling Luca some some inappropriate names, and I'm trying to remember was it Mello who got somebody kicked out this year for doing for for talking, but it's oh, just like remember. like you know these like if you sit close to the game watch your mouth like these dudes are still dudes like saying dumb stuff to them doesn't work out well for you as a spectator it's just not that hard right and like the guys sitting behind uh harp and follow well like you could hear them swearing on the broadcast they were really loud like it was <laughs> like it, it, it like it wasn't just like the normal words they allow on television these were like hbo words they were yelling out it's amazing i didn't yeah. catch that at all Oh yeah! All it right, was, man. It was crazy. Thanks so much for hanging out on part of your Thursday. I hope you enjoy your Friday, and you and I will talk soon. But guys, go ahead and uh, give, a, give us a, give us a follow if you are not subscribed to the podcast, and stay tuned tomorrow afternoon for the uh, post game locker room. I'm sorry, it's now green room, which will go up on your feeds and and probably you know right before your drive home from work. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll talk at some point during uh, the All Star break, guys. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, Just go to cars.com. It's magical.